I think that's just a shared experience that that is one of the most stressful things in the world. Here's what is annoying. What people <laughs> in their jobs who are experts at their jobs, like, you're the expert, not me. I love how you're like thinking that an expert is putting your car in neutral. No, no I'm just saying like. <laughs> and welcome, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I'm John. And we're your gracious, 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 gracious Host. Wow, that's pretty good. Usually I make you do that by yourself. More energy, more energy, more that's, power, more, more power. power, more energy. I, I don't Somebody know. said I was doing it wrong last time. So it, you, you double up. You go maybe more just energy, maybe more. make your own chant. I that like way you don't energy, have to. More energy, more power. More energy, more power. How was your week, John? How's your day going? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling productive. Good. That's good. I'm nice shoes. Say new shoes. Why are you wearing shoes? Because they say, you know, dress, dress like uh, you're going to work. And this is how I dress going to work. I don't want to be too comfortable because then I get like tired, you know? You're just like naturally not comfortable. And what? You're like in joggers and a t-shirt. This is my work attire. I also notice that you always wear shoes in the house. Like not, not necessarily outside shoes. Like you always wear slippers or something. Oh, yeah. You're never walking barefoot. No, I hate it. Why? I don't like walking barefoot. Why not? I don't know. Like Kobe's dog know. hair everywhere. I step on something hard. I hate that. Really? Or crunchy because you throw stuff on the floor all the time that I step on. So, what, do I, what do I throw on the like, floor? If you're cooking, you're just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> just onions I flying. I bring Kobe over and I say, Kobe. He's our living vacuum. Speaking of Coco. He's so cute. He's getting old. He's got he a bum stepped hip. on his tail the other day. I, it's Rude. not like I meant to. Oh my God. He, he's just a baby, John. He's not. He's I don't an know old why man. he's shedding so much recently. He's so Shouldn't cute. he be like gaining his fur back because it's like winter months? I think months? he does like a big shed twice a year. And think about if he was like a full bred shepherd or like a husky because he's mixed with everything but think about if he was like a full bred i know i'm more nervous about that massive tumor on his chest i think it's benign yeah that's what they said Who knows? they didn't do like an x-ray on it. he's like oh yeah that's benign like well he felt it, it th i think it's just like a fatty tumor dogs get those uh, we, we should get a second opinion but i do want to talk about wedding planning for taylor swift and travis kelsey like week two that was such a huge segue She's, we're talking about kobe's cancer it's benign on my mind lump. And people are probably like, oh my God, I didn't come to this podcast to hear more about Taylor Swift. Shut the fuck up. I will never. This is just so fucking cute. I'm, I don't know why I'm just like so giddy for them. They're so cute. I do not care. I have to show you this video. It was from yesterday's game at the Jets game. She walks in with her, with her posse, which I want to manifest Okay, I do want to be part of that posse. How amazing would that be to just... Be like, mm, Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, Taylor Swift. They're just, you know, our, in our just friend group. Out. I know. I guess we would be in their friend group. They need they need some brunettes. If you could actually pick your ideal, like, friend group. Like, if you could have your posse, four people besides you and me, who would it be? I mean, how, like, I, Taylor Swift would be so fucking cool to be friends with. Okay. But four people? That's so hard. I'd be like, Leo. Living. Miles Teller. Living people. John Barthol. Bernthal. Bernthal. He's a cool dude. He's a badass. And, I feel like uh, Jennifer Lawrence would be a fun friend. Yeah, I'd actually pick her too. Yeah, she'd be funny. Her last movie was so fucking oh funny. My god. Oh my god. But anyway, yeah, no. So I just I just think that they're the fucking cutest. But my friend sent me a video that a fan took of Taylor Swift at the game. And it was of Blake Lively, like spotting Travis Kelsey on the field and being like, oh, look, there he is. And then Taylor like gets all like, giddy and they like bump hips. And it's just like, it's so cute. Ugh. Why do I get like Hunger Game vibes? You know, it's like this cute couple. It's like this is like the couple that they want everyone to like love and like get together. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, it just seems very it's just so publicized. Publicized. Really? Because yeah. to me, it's like like Barbie and Ken. <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> Cool. It's just in his Mojo Dojo Listen, Casa house. I don't know enough about it, but I will say like they look like a cute couple. They're so like, cute. They have to get married. They get married, it'll break the internet. Would you go back to filming weddings to film their wedding? Yeah, you gonna pay me like two hundred grand? Sure, I'll film your wedding. What if it was just for free? <laughs> Fuck no. You can invite me. Mm, I know that's tough. I don't know that I would want to do it for free. You would either. do the wedding for free? No. No. Have has anything ever happened from when we did stuff for free? No. So I sucked your dick for free. 
Cut that out, Coop. Cut that out. It's so irrelevant. Cut that out. It's so irrelevant. <laughs> and here we are. We're married. <laughs> yep. That's what got me. <laughs> <laughs> you make me so uncomfortable sometimes. Why? You just like why? You just, just say like, off the wall shit that's so irrelevant. Roll. What do you mean? I'm talking about our business and and <laughs> weddings, and I know you're like suck a dick. Well, no, like I mean, in business, we always. I think that it depends on what you're doing. Like you could do things for a discounted rate when you're you first starting out. You're building work, your portfolio. You suck dick at home. Yeah, but like. And you, you're just making such a such a statement. You're like, I've never gotten anything good for free or whatever the fuck you said. <laughs> oh yeah, that ain't free, John. You know what? I else? said this last last podcast ain't nothing free. Nothing is free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. No, no. I could suck that D with these Invisaligns in, smooth gliding. <laughs> Sweet dude, I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna move along into uh, what else happened this week? We had our anniversary. You know who we saw outside of our anniversary dinner? We were walking out Reba. at the same time. Oh, did you want to <laughs> say it? Sorry, go ahead. No, just like you have people love to be like Alex cuts John off all the time. <laughs> you cut me off more than anyone. I mean, I guess it's just me and you. So like you're the only person who cut who could cut me off, but. What the fuck? So anyone who is, you know, alive during the 80s, uh, Reba. No, she's currently a judge on The Voice. I wouldn't know that either. Do you watch a lot of like No, no, no. I only saw that because it came up on my TikTok. Like some, a singer, and then she like hit the thing. And I was like, Reba. She's beautiful, by the way. Gorgeous. Like good for her. Gorgeous. Killer shape. How old is she? I have no idea, but she was stunning. And I was like. Crushing it. Every time that we like see a celeb out in the wild, I always just freeze up and I'm like, <gasps> don't say anything. I'm not going to lie. I had to shit so bad that if Reba was standing in front of me, she would have gotten Heisman <laughs> stiffed arm to the ground because I ran out of that you restaurant. You were sweating because I'm waiting outside for John because he was in the bathroom. And then I'm walking out at the same time that Reba and I'm assuming her husband was walking out. And I'm like, oh my God, I wonder if John's going to make it out in time to see that Reba is like walking out with us. John comes out, he goes, we got to go. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, but look, there's Reba, there's Reba. I'm pouring sweat. The worst part is like, you go, I don't we're care. We're like a fancy dinner. I had to shit. And as soon as I go to the bathroom, as soon as I sit on the toilet, someone's banging on the door. I'm like, God, you know, like, can I have a couple minutes of peace? No. So you try to like push that out and you know, you didn't get everything out. And now I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, let me just try to make it home at this point. I almost peed my pants laughing because literally the stress in John's face, but also the audible sound effects that I hear. It's not sound effects, I guess, when it's real life. But the fact that I hear it buckshot as soon as you get into the bathroom. I didn't even sit down. <laughs> didn't even make it to the toilet seat. Got it all in there, but that's enough for everyone. <laughs> If I anyone, think I should be a spokesperson for IBS. Like I would be. You literally are like I don't have IBS. You do have IBS. Maybe, I'm glad that you're coming around. I I'm not embarrassed to talk about. It. I'm not saying no, I have no, IBS. No, I never I said just you were. But you used to always just be like I don't I have think IBS. It depends on what I eat or if I eat too much. Like I eat a shit ton of eggs. But like, is that the only? Th that's not like what makes and you hot sharp. sauce. I know when I don't eat a lot of hot sauce, like I'm okay. I eat hot sauce. It's like. You eat hot sauce with every single I meal. Know. So it's not IBS. This is, well, then it's like. You got a colonoscopy and they told you lay off the hot sauce. <laughs> you you were inflamed from the hot sauce. Fucking do. I know. You didn't have hot sauce for maybe 48 hours. And then you went back to being your normal self. You know. You know what? You, this is what you get. You married me. They say there's people who could tolerate a lot of hot sauce and like, you know, pain. They have high testosterone levels. Who said that? Who said that? I don't know. No some, one some guy in a podcast. That. Yeah. <laughs> not me. No, not me, though. It was a different guy. It was like a doctor. He, like, he's been on, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, what are his credentials? I don't know. love Dr. John. <laughs> yeah. Hey, moving on. Anyways. And before we begin, this episode is sponsored by Honey Love. Ladies, listen up. 
Are you tired of uncomfortable bras? Well, say goodbye to those days of discomfort because Honey Love has redefined the bra game. Honey Love's bras feature revolutionary supportive bonding, eliminating the need for underwire while still giving you the lift that you deserve. And the best part, they're crafted from fabric so soft it feels like a second skin. But seriously, it does. It like blends into your body. I've been through my fair share of uncomfortable bras and shapewear, and I know it can affect your confidence. But now you could wave those worries goodbye. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save a fantastic 20% off at honeylove.com slash mascara, M-A-S-C-A-R-A. That's honeylove.com slash mascara. Please show some love for our show and let them know that we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. Your comfort and confidence matter. Visit honeylove.com slash M-A-S-C-A-R-A for 20% off today. And this episode is also sponsored by Lumi. What's the secret to a fantastic date? It's all about the head to toe confidence, my friends. And speaking of confidence, let me introduce you to Lumi, whole body deodorant. It's not just for your pits, it's for your privates and beyond. Created by an OBGYN who knows that the blame isn't always on the, well, you know what? Lumi is a pH optimized whole body deodorant. It's clinically proven to keep odor under control for a whole 72 hours. Now, for all the newbies out there, Lumi's starter pack is perfect for you. It includes a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And because we love our listeners, new customers can score an incredible $5 off at Lumi starter pack with code STRAIGHT at lumideodorant.com. That's over 40% off your starter pack. So head on over to lumideodorant.com and use code STRAIGHT to unlock that confidence and make your date nights unforgettable. Anyways, we asked everyone on Instagram a question, a universal question, so that everyone could participate and give your mediocre advice. So this is just going to be like a, par- a whole participation, a group participation thing, so that you guys could also give your mediocre advice, and we could laugh at your advice and judge you for your advice. <laughs> so, uh, well, first, sh- I should think- I read the question? Read the first what? Read the question and then give your response first because I don't want you to have any sort of like biased opinion or be swayed by other oh, people. Okay, because I haven't looked at your responses, but you have no, looked I at have. their responses. Okay. So read the question. So in case you were wondering, hall passes are a real thing. My husband and I each take a one week vacation every year away from each other, and whatever we do is off the record. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this and if you think this is healthy. I think it just depends on what works in your own relationship, you know, to each their own. I don't know that I would be happy in our relationship, but I don't know. I guess if you both, I could just see that causing issues down the road. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you both get a hall pass. Cool. What if like someone catches feelings for, you know, whatever. I don't know. I think that it's a slippery slope and I don't think that I would do it, but if it works in your own marriage, go for it. That's a good response. It's a good response. There was a bunch of responses and they were all over the place. Okay. A lot of different, you know, perspectives. So I'm just going to read all of them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just going to read a couple of them. So the first one, to each their own, what I think is not healthy for my marriage can be for yours. So right. it's like similar to what I said. Right. All right. Another response. Nothing spices up a marriage like a game of STI roulette and who done it. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, that's, I could see that. Like if you're not practicing safe sex right you don't know if you're taking something home with you or whatever like that's you know (laughs) (laughs) are you are you already sweating thinking of it i'm just gonna keep going i don't want to give my opinion yet we are free to make choices but not free from the consequences of it so like yeah that's true that's true i mean and that's including like anything can happen. Mm -hmm. You don't know. I guess if you're both not just counting down the days until the next trip, then yeah, it's okay. So looking at it in a way of like... Like making sure that your relationship is still fulfilled. Right. And then when you go on the trip, you know, you're also getting filled. (laughs) Fulfilled. Fulfilled. You're vulgar. Who's to say off the record won't turn into on the record? This is a bad idea all around. Catching feelings. That's what I mean. It's like you're going to hook up with people on vacation and knock at their numbers or never think about them again. Like, I don't know. I just think that you can maybe establish rules around it. I'd be interested to sit down with someone who like they actually do this and hear their reasoning why. I feel like it'd be so tough to not catch feelings for that for someone that you're like hooking up with. Also, like how 
I mean, I guess like one night stands are different, but how long, I wonder how long this couple has been together. Also, you're talking about how long they've been doing. You're talking about one night stand, like a week. So you're spending maybe like, say you meet someone or you organize this trip for a week and you're with them for a whole fucking week. It's not a one night stand. Like you're nonstop talking to them. Mm, Next response. As long as they are both okay with it and have their boundaries agreed to. So agreeing beforehand on like the structure of this Mm -hmm. meetup or whatever you're doing. I have a bunch of them. I'm not going to read them all, but I mean, those were good ones. What is your, Oh, I like this. Why not spend time reconnecting with each other in a more intimate like setting? So like, are you doing this because you're bored or like you're, you know, something missing? Cause like, what's your intention behind it? Yeah. Is it because like you want to just spice things up? Because there's ways to do that in your marriage. But again, I'm not here to say like that doesn't work for you if it does work for both of you guys. I just, in my opinion, think that it could be a slippery slope. What's your opinion? Wait, last two. This is gross. Divorce is coming. P.S. What if they get pregnant? Mm. And then the last one goes, so (laughs) you just need health insurance from each other? (laughs) Like it's open marriage. You guys are just together for health insurance. My opinion is it depends on what you guys have like what is okay between you and your significant other in your relationship for us monogamy like i'm not gonna have you if you hook up with somebody else i'm fucking out like that's you and me that's how we work and that's our structure but everyone else is different so whatever you guys are okay with doing like i'm not gonna fucking judge you for what, what works, works for in you your guys. relationship and yeah people can get pissed about that. Like a ton of comments were like, uh, this divorce is good. This marriage is going to end in divorce. And like, how could they, you know, be together if they want to like hang out or hook up with other people? I just like, you know, to each his own. Right. To each his own. Or it's like the movie hall pass. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty funny. And then you realize that, you know, you just wanted your partner all along. You get this hall pass and you realize, oh, I'm actually not a hot piece of ass and I can't get laid as easily as I thought I could. (laughs) Right. I'm also going to say, like, I don't see how it's going to work because, like, that wouldn't work for us. Like, I know, like, I would catch feelings for someone else if I'm spending time with them. Or just jealousy. I'd be like, not only whatever you have going on separately, but I would be too jealous. I'd be like, so what'd she look like? Like, Do you talk about it? Would you talk about it? I don't know. That's what it is, too. Or do you just, like, leave it on vacation? I feel like you don't talk about it. I don't know. I think that this is, like, considered an open relationship. Right? Yeah. You get But again, to each their own. If it works for you, you do you. Yeah. Let's jump into questions, shall we? Jump in. Am I the asshole for kicking my maid of honor out of my wedding five weeks before my wedding? For context, she recently got a boyfriend and hasn't made the time to hang out or check in with me. She also hasn't planned anything for my bridal shower or a bachelorette party, not to mention she's trying to bring her dog to the bachelorette party and the wedding. I'm super stressed. No, you're not. You're that's totally understandable. She wants to bring her dog. Didn't we go to a wedding where someone brought their fucking dog but didn't tell anyone that they were bringing the dog? Uninvited dog to the wedding. I just think that it sounds like there's a little bit more to this friendship ending besides the fact that, like, she didn't plan, you know, your bridal events and... This is somebody who is self-centered. Because I... I, Part of me is like, okay, well you're the bride, your bride, your maid of honor shouldn't, that shouldn't all fall on her. But when you accept the role of maid of honor, you're willing to help. Like you're supposed to be there to help. If you don't want the responsibility of helping the bride, not that you have to like pay for everything and be the sole person doing this all, but like you should be assisting the bride. If you don't want to do that, then say no to being a maid of honor. Does she not know what it like entails? Right, what the job role is of being a maid of honor. I don't know, I guess some people just are like, oh, that just means I'm your best friend and I just get to tag along for the wedding. Would she be more involved if she didn't just start dating somebody? Because my question is, <laughs> she just started dating somebody. She's just like, um, that's her main focus now. Like, I just think that's very self-centered to act like that. I don't know that I would have kicked her out. You made her your maid of honor for a reason. Have you had a conversation with her yet? You know? Yeah, I wouldn't abruptly just be like, uh, you're out. Right. I'd be like, hey, just so you... Like, what's going on? Right. Like, this is Do a time... you need help? I'm excited for you that you found someone, but, like, I also need you. You're my maid of honor. You know, like... It's all about 
communication. You weren't you. You didn't I'll do it with you me. Got ready? Communication. Wow, John, you went full soprano there. That's right. Acapello. Uh, this is a little bit of a gray area because I need more context to this one. You know, have you talked about it? Were there other things? If you talked about it and nothing changed, then yeah, cut her. If you didn't talk about it, then then I think you should have had a then conversation. You should say with her. something to her yeah. first. Next question. My spouse and I have been together for 10 years. The first night we slept together, we were woken up by a fart. We both laid there quietly pretending to sleep and were butt to butt. He thinks he was the one who farted because that's very normal for him. But I was the one who farted and was too humiliated to tell him. I wanted to tell him for so long, but at this point, it's such a funny story that I can't bear to admit that I was the one who accidentally farted on him. Should I tell him? <laughs> Your first night you slept together and you've been together for 10 years, I would tell him. At this point, tell him. You're, this can't be real. Is she that mortified to tell him? I mean, I told John my secret of smashing the car rim yeah, into we're a still curb. Not, still not okay with John, that. it'd be different if you didn't smash every other car rim, okay. tire rim into the curb. I think you should tell him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this isn't real. Unless you're a couple that doesn't... So there's couples that don't fart in front of each other. That's true. I don't believe that you're um, actually in love if you don't fart in front of each other. Is you're, it even real? You have secrets. Like you're hiding things. Just but, tell them. Just tell them. Like you're going to be with someone, pop out a whole ass baby, potentially shit your pants and not, and not fart. Like what are you pretending? We all have assholes. By the way, going going on that... If you were to have a baby, I'm not watch. I'm not going to watch the... You're, oh, you want like a shoulders up shoulders up or like whatever yeah good i think i just think but mm. never say never who knows maybe no nope, i'm good maybe, or maybe we would have a c-section or maybe i can't have kids so who knows i'm just saying if if it did happen just so we're on the same page i'm it's gonna be a shoulder shot i feel like who wants who's that like, would probably be I the wanna, best where i hear people be like i want to be the first one seeing the crowning i'll be like fuck what the fuck no Absolutely not. YouTube it. <laughs> YouTube it and then talk to me. But that's another one, though, to each their own. I don't know that that would work for us. <laughs> but if, like, you're curious and your your wife is okay with it, John, I think, like, lock Ace, it up. Ace Ventura, when he's Stop. coming out of the rhino's ass, he's like, lock it up. If our child is going to look anything remotely close to that, we're definitely not having kids. <laughs> Next question. My crush of 10 years started texting me and we ended up going on two dates. We're both in the same friend group and recently single. We have never been close before, but are always friendly at events and parties. Between the two dates, we were texting, being a little flirty and so on. In my opinion, the dates went really great, but the texting started to fade after a few weeks and he told me that he was really busy at work as he is self-employed. If he was interested, would it be hard to find a few moments in the day to text? Now he's been silent for over a week. I played it cool, but I've never been good at playing games when I truly like someone. Recently, I tried planning a vacation with my girlfriends, but they can't go until next year. The vacation was brought up as kind of a joke while me and this guy were talking, and I joked that I'd invite him if my friends couldn't go. Should I be bold and ask him the next time we see each other if he wants to go? Or would I embarrass myself because maybe he realized that he's not into me and silently ghosted me? Uh, no, I wouldn't invite him. Based off of the decline in conversation already, I, I wouldn't. If he wanted to, he would. Meaning if he was interested in you, he would be texting you. He'd be calling you. He'd be asking you out on more dates. And I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news here, but move along. No one is busier than anyone else. No. And, and not just that, like... Yes, he could find the time in the day to text you to plan something. Like, there's no, no truer saying than if he wanted to, he would. Yeah. And right now, he's not. So I think that save yourself the, not even the embarrassment, but just like the energy of fucking asking this guy to go on a vacation. So she went on, they went on two dates? They went on two dates, yeah. And then they're just like, the texting like slowly began to After fade. that second date. Mm -hmm. Did you hook up with him? I don't think that has anything to do with it. Could. It definitely could. It's Unfortunately, it could. Guys could be like, oh, I got what I want. Now I'm now I'm out. I'm sure women probably do the same thing. I think that's like... Uh, if he was texting her nonstop, did he just get like a CEO but is that role? Like, but and is now that like he's... the rule though? Because I've been in relationships, case in point, where we what? don't wait until 
a long time into dating and it works out. You know what I mean? Like, I think that there is, I don't think that that's a rule that like, oh, just because you give it up early, yeah, the guy's you, not interested. But we hooked up and then I was like blowing up your phone and then you like were dodging me. It's a game. It's a fucking game. I don't think it has to be though. It doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be, but it fucking is. If you're giving all of your attention, the other person's like, well, I don't have to put that much effort or work into it. Like, I got you. Unfortunately, like, that's how a lot of people are. It's fucked up. But, like, you got to start playing hardball. But I wouldn't think just if, if you guys did hook up, that's not why he's not texting you. How do you fuck? How do you know? How do you know? That's not necessarily what I'm saying. Listen, somebody has to no, 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 let's no, no, say no. all, everything... Let's lay everything out there. No, meaning that if just because you, if you did hook up and he's not texting you, like it doesn't necessarily have to be the reason that you hooked up. Like also don't- I'm not saying it's a definite, no, of course. I'm just saying it may be an avenue of why. Like let's look at everything. But either way, like he's not putting in the energy now. So exactly. like don't even put your energy 100%. into thinking about it. Like just like focus on yourself. If it happens, it happens. If not, like- Right. I think ultimately- Move along. Do you. Do you. Next question. multiple fights about it with me asking him what his end goal is for this because frankly it's tiring we live in rural america so finding a hospital job with no on-call time is not an option should he still be on my ass about it or no more importantly what i just heard in there was he counts my on-call beer so you're still drinking when you're no, no, on no, no, call no no, read, no. The, read that part over she says when i'm on call he will count my beers before i go on, on call meaning like I'm assuming if he's leaving the house. Don't, as, don't assume. This is what I'm reading from the question. I'm not assuming shit. Meaning if he leaves the house, like she's on call, he counts the beers to make sure uh, that it's the same number. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I what almost, are you talking about? She literally wrote, I no longer drink while on call. I mean, so that's not me assuming. You fucking shouldn't. You shouldn't have done oh, it to right. begin with. You're in fucking healthcare taking care of people. You're on call. Someone's life is in your hand. Are you a fucking nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you an RN? Even if you're a fucking CNA and you have to help someone get out of bed and you're drunk and they fall out of bed, yeah, they could sue you. They could sue the hospital. Like, you're fucking liable. Like, so I don't feel bad for you for like what you did in the past. I'm in healthcare. I'd, I mean, I I've seen fucked up healthcare professionals not act appropriate. Right. And like, I want to find some area to be like, but it's okay. But like, it's honestly not. And I think right now, like you trying to be like, but my husband's on my ass. Yeah. Because he doesn't trust you. Like it takes time to build up trust because number one, you did something that impacted him he had to come and pick you up which whatever but you got fired and that impacted both of you how financially. did you get another healthcare job there's no way you told him that you were drinking on the job or uh, when you're on call and 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 then went to work i think at this point though it's just a matter of like you made a mistake you fucked up and your husband you guys just have to rebuild that trust so like does he have a right to be on your ass about it yeah he he kind of does actually i you know let me finish the vent session like Oh the, God, the first part, does. the first part, like she's super fucked up for even doing that. You're in healthcare, taking care of people, blah, blah. The other part, like whether he trusts you or not, like it's your job. You're an adult. Like if you get fired, then you get fired. It's not, it's not on him to like micromanage you. Mm -hmm. And like, so he needs to like ease off on that. I get why he's stressed, but it's. It's more of you having well, to take responsibility saying, like, for yourself. It's a trust that has to be rebuilt. Like there's a reason why he's stressed about it. And it might be financial. Like he might not want you right. to lose the job. And so he's like, bitch, like get your shit together. You we cannot, need this job. We need, we need you this to money. keep this job. Exactly. And so, yeah, I think that once you could prove over time and like whatever that looks like for him. And again, maybe you need therapy to work through this counseling, communicate, like to show him that you are trustworthy, but 
I think I think it's fair that he feels the way that he feels because again, like there's a track record that proves it. So I don't know. You t similar to what the response was that that person wrote. If you whatever actions you take, you know you have to face the consequences. It's true. It's not just your life. You know, you're you're a partner and you have a teammate. So act appropriately. And as a reminder, today's episode is sponsored by Honey Love. Have you ever experienced that glorious feeling of getting home after a long day and immediately wanting to take off your bra? We all have, definitely John. But with Honey Love, those days of discomfort are history. Honey Love's bras are so incredibly comfortable that you'll forget you're even wearing them. Honestly, it's true. Now let me introduce you to their best seller, the crossover bra. It's not just comfortable, it's a game changer. This bra offers all the support you'd expect from a traditional bra, but here's a kicker, no underwires. Plus, it features sexy mesh detailing for that extra flair. For those moments when you crave a more relaxed fit, check out their V-Bra. It provides the support you need without the uncomfortable underwire. Designed to lift and separate with molded cups, this is no ordinary bra. And guess what? Honey Love has more than just bras. They offer incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, and leggings, perfect for everyday support. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save a fabulous 20% off at honeylove.com slash mascara. That's honeylove.com slash M-A-S-C-A-R-A. -A. They'll ask where you heard about them and let them know that we sent you. It's time to say goodbye to the discomfort of underwires, thanks to Honey Love. And this episode is also sponsored by Lumi. Have you heard of Lumi whole body deodorant? It's truly a game changer, the first of its kind. And guess what? It's safe to use anywhere on your body. Now here's what makes Lumi so special. It was created by an OBGYN who witnessed firsthand how ordinary body odor was often misdiagnosed and mistreated. Lumi is not just about masking odor with fragrances. It's powdered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it even starts. Think of it as a pre-odorant. But that's not all. Lumi is aluminum-free, baking soda-free, and paraben-free. Plus, it's pH balanced for safe use below the belt. And we have a special offer for you. Lumi's starter pack includes a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant rights, and free shipping. New customers can score an incredible $5 off at Lumi starter pack with code STRAIGHT at lumideodorant.com. That's over 40% off your starter pack. Don't wait any longer. Head to LumiDeodorant.com and use code STRAIGHT to embrace the confidence that comes with Lumi Whole Body Deodorant. All right, exactly. let me read one or two. Oh, John, here you go. If you uh, need any help pronouncing anything, let me know. Shh, pronouncing anything. You got this. <laughs> what am I, a child? No, but you're dyslexic. Stop throwing that <laughs> in my face. Me? You're the one you bring it up every episode. I don't. You bring it up. You, you say it all the time. You bring up your dyslexia in every episode no, unprompted no. by me. I hope that the Dyslexia Community Association comes after you for being with your malice. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> How do I tell my grandmother I can't come to our family Christmas anymore? My husband and I will be celebrating our second Christmas as a married couple. And as much as I love the holidays, it's also chaotic getting in all the family time. My grandmother has always been very intense about getting all of her children and grandkids together for Christmas. <laughs> Breathe. <sighs> we live in Texas and my husband and I live five hours from our parents, but eight hours from my grandparents, which is too much traveling for a holiday break. It's exhausting and something has got to give. Not to mention getting together with our extended family isn't much fun due to dumb family drama. My parents always try to get my grandparents to come visit them for Christmas, but they always decline. Should we just suck it up and keep pleasing her? Or is it correct to think we are in the phase of life where our family's changing and we have new priorities? We might not be the people to ask because we don't give a fuck about holidays because traveling during the holidays sucks ass. So I'm like, no, don't go. That's my immediate response. You want to know why I don't read the questions? Now I remember. <laughs> because you don't know what the question was. I was too focused on reading the question. So basically, her extended and her husband, family wants them to come for Christmas. And she like, lives too far. a lot of hours away. And her grandma wants the whole family to get together for the holidays. And she's like, I don't want to go. It's drama. It's far. I have a husband. I have a family. Like, I want to celebrate Christmas with my family. Right. Which I totally understand. Like, number one, it's more expensive to travel for the holidays. Number two, it's it's just a day. 
like you don't you don't have to num- celebrate on that holiday. Should you visit your family? Yes. yes. Does it have to be on the holiday? No. No. Yeah. I do think it's important to maintain those relationships. Yes. You know, if again, like especially grandparents as dramatic as you know your family might be whatnot like you, i i just you just how many more cherish, years left yeah, do they have you gotta cherish your your elderly they got one foot in the coffin so you better <gasps> see them stop it's my grandma's birthday today <laughs> i know Don't I, was talk a, I wasn't about, talking about your grandmother like thank that. god i love my grandma she never answers her phone i know Does she hate us I called her today to wish her happy birthday and she didn't answer <laughs> how old is she 87 wow today yeah She's a clean. young lady. She really is. She got both her feet on ground. She f- both her feet on ground. Yeah, there's on not the one, ground. There's not one in the coffin. Yeah, both are on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Yeah, got it. <laughs> she actually fell when we were in New York. Didn't phase her. <laughs> she fell on her face. She's a tank. Didn't phase her. No bruises. Won't listen to me. I say remove those throw rugs. No, Doesn't matter. Fall. John walks through. If any of you have elderly people living in your house who would walk through your house and just point out all of fall the fall risk fall risk all fall the fall risk. risks no i mean i understand where you feel polarized in this because again it's the holidays you want to be with your family your family wants you to be with them but when you get married your spouse is now your family holidays are really it's a tough time to like split your time and your energy but i think that ultimately you just have to do what feels best for you if it's a lot for you to go travel during that time Stay home. Plan to go another time when it makes more sense for you so that you don't have to be around all the family drama. I agree. I, I do. I mean, what Alex said, basically. Cool. I just, yeah, holidays and they're expensive if you're flying. Like, you we, know, it's like. I think going ugh. to New York, it was almost triple during the holidays. Two weeks later, third of the price. When like, I moved to New York was on Christmas Day and I got there at like midnight and I nail traffic. Even on Christmas day, I nail traffic. Everyone's just traveling to see on fam. the day. Probably think about the movie Four Christmases. You know, they're driving around from family to family. Oh, that, I love that movie. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read one more question and okay. then I'm, yeah, okay. I'm already exhausted. And then you're giving up, okay. Uh. All right. You're doing great. Thank you. My husband and I have been married for three years, together for seven. The month after we moved in together and around the one year mark of our relationship, His childhood best friend unexpectedly committed suicide. It hit my husband really hard, of course. During the grieving, my husband began drinking a lot, like drinking an entire bottle in one night, multiple times a week. Long story short, it turned into him hiding his drinking from me, and the drinking got really bad. About a year later, I told him enough is enough. We need to change something or I can't stay anymore. Fast forward, we did a lot of therapy, had a lot of ups and downs, and things did eventually get a lot better. We eventually got married, and I'd say since our marriage, his drinking has been significantly better with occasional episodes of him drinking too much and hiding it. Over the last year, things have been really great all around. Now, for my question, I really want a child, but I feel scared to bring a child into the world because I'm afraid things will go back to how they were before. Our therapist graduated us. Things are going great. We have an awesome relationship and the drinking seems to be fine. Am I wrong for being afraid to have kids? Do I wait longer and see how things go? The only thing that concerns me is the occasional, like when you had like mentioned the occasional, he blacks out or whatever goes above and beyond and hides it from you because that's not something that you want in a relationship, especially when you have kids and it's an added stressor. But I just think that, you know, it, it boils down to trust having that, conversation with your partner and making sure that they also feel secure. Like, what does he say about it? You know, like what is his take on this whole situation of having a kid and how he feels responsible enough? Like, is he confident in his own abilities to stay like Mm semi-sober? I feel like there's enough in the world that to be frightened by, and there's, you can make any excuse in the book to like why you should or shouldn't do something. I just feel like if you really want to have a kid and I think you'll make it work. You know? I also just think it's it's one of those things that is ultimately out of your control. You can stress about it, but is that really going to do anything? Like you just have to let him live his life and show you that he's changed. If you're going to constantly worry that he's going to be this past version of himself, like that's going to take a toll on you mentally. So I think that you have to trust that he's taken the steps to you know, mature and 
fix his past ways and that he now can stand up to this new responsibility that you guys want to bring into the world together. But he has to also be on the same page about that. That is the worst. That's, there's always so much stress when it comes to like what other people are doing and right. other people's actions because you can't control what they're doing. And a lot of times you could brush it off if it's not like your partner, though. Mm -hmm. Your partner, like, it impacts your life yeah, so heavily. You guys are to go, like, if my friend got, was getting blasted, and I didn't want to be around, it, I would just fucking leave. You right. know, I'm not going to do that to my, to you or like a family member. I don't know. So it's kind of like, it does involve you though. So, but I think again, you set those boundaries and he has to know that he can't behave that way anymore. And he does know that. So right. it's a matter of just like trusting that he has taken those steps and, you know, like I said, matured into the person that he needs to be. So the unknown other, uh, is frightening. Right. I get that. But don't let that dictate what you want to do in your life. Right. Cool. Great job, John. Woo. My husband and I have been having marital issues and we are in therapy and want to work on our issues. I go from being super hopeful to being completely unsure as whether or not we will make it. Each of us have our own issues and I have made the next step to pursue therapy for myself. My husband has acknowledged that he has issues, but he doesn't know what they are. He continues to make excuses about not having the time to seek individual therapy. I refuse to continue a marriage if he's not willing to seek help, knowing full well that he's admitted he needs the help. At what point does someone say enough is enough? We have children together, and I don't want the children to be the only reason why this marriage stays together. I mean, if it's affecting you in a way that it's interrupting your day-to-day -day and it's ruining your relationship, like... If he truly loves you and wants to be with you, like he'll do what he has to do to make it work. Right. It, but it sounds like you guys are in therapy together, though, already. Is that what we are in therapy and want to work on our issues? But you want him in individual therapy. Have you talked about that in therapy? You know, like maybe chat with your therapist in your couples counseling and see what, like, what are you not working on in couples counseling that you think that he should be working on in individual therapy? Yeah. If he's actually in therapy with you, it's like, he's taking the steps mm -hmm. to do it. I mean, I guess you want him to take that next step further, but I don't know what is. And again, like, I'm, I'm not saying that he shouldn't go to therapy. Like, obviously he should. I think everyone can fucking benefit from going to therapy, but you could lead a horse to water. Like he's going to do what he wants to do. So I don't think that there's necessarily a way that it goes back to same thing. Like you can't control. Yeah. You can't people. control. But, but also what is, what are the core issues? Like you're saying marital issues, like in your relationship that he, you think that he could benefit from that he's in individual therapy that you guys aren't discussing in couples therapy. Like you do have children together and I hate to say it, but that is a reason to still fight for your relationship more. Like I guarantee, I don't guarantee you, but I bet you over 75% chance that whatever relationship you're in next, you'll probably be going to therapy for something else. It, it's like, there's going to be good and bad in everything. I, and I, a majority of people are in therapy and it's, it's going to be something right. So pick and choose like what is worth fighting for and i don't know what i'm trying to say you, you know it's just like well, how bad is what's going on it just seems like he is trying to help like contribute to like making the relationship better right it's not to minimize what your issues are my point being is everyone has issues it seems like he's putting in the effort to work with you together the grass isn't always greener though i'm just i'm just saying like is this guy, a whole, what's he doing? But you also only know the problems. Like you, you didn't give us anything. Like I know. We don't know what your marital issues are. So like, there's only so much that we could tell you. Also, everyone's thres threshold is different of right. like what they could tolerate or not. But yeah. But like, if you truly feel like your relationship is that toxic and you know, at what point does someone say enough is enough? Like if you feel like you're at that point of enough, it might be different for someone else. Like only, you know, that also, is it really that toxic? Like what's going on? Cause I could tell you this, you go into another relationship after that lovey-dovey stage like you're gonna find something that annoys you about whatever partner you're with there's just there's no way in the healthy relationship that there's not something that's gonna bother you about somebody else and it's just like navigating through that it's also not saying like to settle but again no, but in like relationships nothing's gonna be perfect right you have to like work towards it next question 
Me and my wife have been together for seven years, married for one. Recently, we have been very anxious about our girls ages two and four being around dogs as our youngest is a little heavy handed. Our youngest was recently bitten by my in-laws dog who looks after the girls once a week. The situation was minor, but still stressful. After some discussions, they finally agreed to keep the dog separated from the children when they have them. However, my mom and her husband also look after the girls once a week and their dog has bitten my sister before, which required surgery and was left with a scar in her nose. From day one, we asked if the dog could be separated and gates were put up to do so. However, we had noticed when we were picking the girls up that the gates had actually been removed with nothing being said to us about it. My priority is my girl's safety. So recently we raised the subject with my mom and her husband and asked if they can ensure they could separate the dogs and that if they were unable to do so, we would need to find alternative arrangements. My mom and her husband were angry and I was being questioned on my reasoning, being told that the dog wouldn't be locked away in his own own home as it stresses him out too much. So as they disagreed, we made alternative arrangements. And now my mom and her husband think we are punishing them away because they will no longer be looking after the grandchildren at the house. How do I make them understand that their decision to consistently choose a dog over our children is their problem and not ours? How do we get them to see that they have to accept the consequences of this decision rather than trying to force their reasoning upon us and trying to make out we are the ones punishing them? The risk of injury to your kids. Yeah, that's your your kid's health. Top priority. You're punishing us. What are you fucking 10? I want to applaud if, if you. If you want to see the grandkids, then guess what? If you're not going to leash, at least just like keep your dog separated, then you can come visit and see the kids. I don't need you to watch the kids. We'll we'll make other arrangements. Like you said, yes, top priority is your children's health, safety, and well-being. Like Boundaries. I think you're punishing us. Just put the fucking gate up. Like, how fucking hard is that? Why are people so fucking stupid? Just like, if you want to watch the kid, like, you're not doing me... It'd be different, too, if it was, like, adults going over and being like, well, I'm not a big fan of dogs. Can you put your dogs outside? I'd be like, no. Don't come. It's my dog. Don't come over. But children if they want to watch the kids like and they're babies two and four they're putting their hands in the dog's mouth on faces like they don't know right from wrong someone's gonna respond this to be like well it's their house i'd be like who fucking cares if you bit somebody you're the one who's liable if the dog has already bit somebody once it's different with kids like and it's different because you're not there to ensure that the kids are staying away from the dogs. You're trusting that your parents are watching or your mom is watching. And like, again, it's not that she's not capable of watching. You just don't know. And if an accident happens, who's to blame? You're going to blame the dog? Probably not. You're going to blame the mom. And then she's going to feel bad. And then you're going to feel bad for putting it in a situation. It could get worse. It could get worse. That's actually great. Be like, honestly, mom, let's set the scene. Set the scene. You All this went down. You give him one more shot. The dog bites your daughter. Your daughter bites her on the face. She's got to go to the hospital, get get stitches. Who are you going to blame? Mm-hmm. Your mother. How nasty and to- how nasty is that relationship going to be after that? Think about it. Right. It, it's just a snowball effect. And I think maybe that's what you have to do is set the scene with your parents and say, this is what we're afraid of happening. I love you. And, that's and a you, great idea. And you love your dog. And that's okay. So I'm not asking you to change your lifestyle to accommodate to us. Like you're doing the right thing. And that's, again, what I was going to say. I want to applaud you. You're yes. doing the right thing because you're not inconveniencing your mom. If anything, you're saying like, okay, you're making that decision. That, that, and that's your prerogative. So we're going to make this decision on our behalf. Like that's the way that you should do it. But the way that she's not understanding, mm-hmm. I think you just have to paint the picture as if it was worst case scenario and say, I don't want to feel, I don't want to blame you if something happens. And so I'm just going to remove our kids from that situation because my number one concern is their safety. Yes. That makes so much sense. What? That's just crazy to me that what someone would not understand that. Because again, first off, we do know like they were doing a favor for you. Like we get that, right? But like, unfortunately, like if they're not going to like heed your fears, then you should go in a different direction. Right? No, stuff. and again, that's why. Like, I think, I think it'd be different if you were writing in and being like, she won't, you know, or like they're not doing this and they have to change that right. and blah blah blah. And it's like. You're no, being understanding. You're being of understanding. Their and you're saying, too. okay, you don't have to put the gate right. up. That's fine. That's like your choice. Like you were helping us watch our kids. That's fine. So I think you're doing the right thing. You just have to put it into a perspective that says, in the worst case scenario, this is what would happen. I agree. 
the only example I could think of, like if if someone was over with Kobe, you know, and they were afraid of dogs and wanted us to set boundaries or whatever, like it's it's our house, our dog. If they don't feel comfortable of being around dogs and they choose to leave, like I understand that. I'd be like, okay, like you don't like dogs. We have a dog, and we'll, I'm not going to we'll kick meet you Kobe somewhere out. for lunch exactly. or whatever. Like we don't, you don't like, have I'm to come over. I'm not going to be offended that someone doesn't feel comfortable around dogs. Yeah, you're the one putting yourself in our like in our home in our right. Environment. Like, so I just don't understand how how one would not understand your decision to do that to find all all and if they want to watch the kids it's a simple simple solution i think you breaking it down for them is definitely going to like help them understand more maybe it's just like a different analogy to come up with a, another analogy i can't think of one on the spot but you know are you going to do it in conclusion are we done with this or do sure. you have more to say we're done we're done okay more, more energy, energy more, more passion more, more energy <laughs> all right last so that, oh wait sorry so that you you mess you remember what it is now <laughs> No. Power with me this french couple stole the suitcase one so many of our videos a hispanic couple steals all of our millions of views i'm like millions and i'm like oh my god shoot we, us some credit we need to do what mr beast does though and we need to just like get ahead of it sue them no <laughs> no <laughs> he has voiceover artists like dub over his videos in other languages so mm. that like they do reach a mass audience and he still gets credit for him so oh, it's his before he uploads face. it he, he's got them all Yep. Shit. That's so a good it's idea. like we could hire people who speak all different we don't have languages. Enough money for that. I know. We're not on Mr. Beast level. We're strapped. But you know what? One day we will be on uh the level to hang out with Taylor Swift and Blake Lively. Once you get on day. Dances with the Stars. Dances with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> What's Don, like, you're probably gonna get on Dancing with the Stars first. That is like the last thing. I, I know, do. but that's why it would be entertaining if you, because you're not okay, a dancer. If, if you, what, what is your ideal show to go on if you were gonna be on one? Well, like a reality show or like a game show. <laughs> Isn't game show reality too? Well, because it's like a scripted show is different. But yeah, I guess if it came down to like what would, a, what would it be for you? Whatever, whatever time, you want. If it was a TV show. Well, no, like a scripted like White Lotus. I would love to be in fucking oh, White Lotus. That's, yeah. Or like Yellowstone. Yeah. So cool. cool. But like a uh, reality game time, like live show like that, probably Dancing with the Stars. That would be so cool. And it would just be full circle. That would be my nightmare. Really? Oh my God, I'd be so stressed out. I've never Doing done dance partner moves. dancing though. So I think that would be a challenge. I Who think knows? you'll be fine. Who Whatever. knows? Maybe one day. You're gonna but ask, I really want to ask me what show I want to be on? No. I really want to, because <laughs> I want to talk about the, another show I want to be on, a cake eating show. Is it cake? I'd be, I'd be down for that. Oh, like anything, anything food related. related yeah pretending right. like we're like expert chefs would be like mm, this is a little mm. undercooked my issue is like for food the bar is on the floor i like everything oh, yeah. i'll shovel shit yeah, in my mouth. <laughs> like we are the easiest critics or like that could make us the worst critics easiest because, critics like because no. we like everything we'd be the best critics not easiest no but best. like easiest we'd be like 10 out of 10 this is amazing exactly but that, i don't think that makes you the best actually i'd probably give five out of ten because i'd be like this is too small <laughs> yeah you would judge off of portion size oh exactly and it needs to be sloppy too like i like saucy food oh like you don't want it to nothing look nothing dry you just want a huge honestly they Heat. could just bring you like the, the pot and just dumped with sauce and hot sauce and oh god, I'm so All right, hungry. so what show do you want to be on? Definitely like something directed by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, like a like a HBO. John, just say docs, Band of Brothers, okay? <laughs> yeah. Pacific Band of Brothers. God, I wish I was on. Um, you should do All your. On the you should Western do your front. audition right now. As a soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, man! <laughs> <laughs> Am I <good? laughs> Freeze! Get off the shed. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Something like that. A bunch of screaming. Don't trust her. Handcuff her. I would seduce you into letting me out of those handcuffs. <laughs> Ain't nothing free. I'd be like, listen, I got... 
I hate Invis- Dustin Freeman. I got Invisalign in. Where are we going? Have you next- ever had Invisalign? <laughs> Go to the next question. On that D. All right, next question. I'm sweating. We really went on a tangent there. We really did. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, dude. Gee, Willigers, we really went on a tangent there. What did there. I say in the beginning? A pickle. Something about a pickle. You've <laughs> no, really no. gotten a pickle. We're, you're we're in a pickle, pickle now. <laughs> That's totally my line. If you didn't do, say that. I think I said it, and you made fun of me. No, I said it when no, we were John, back at our house. I said it would go, you're in a pickle now, and you lost your no, mind. No, I'm almost positive. I said it on a podcast, and you made Good, fun of I me. Did I not say in a pickle? Thank you. Yeah, you've said it. But I'm pretty sure on the show, you made fun of me for saying you're in a pickle. Don't try to take my line. Next question. Go. Someone come with receipts, please. I'm almost positive that I said it. Next question. You have a bad memory. You're also the person who says, put me in a home. So I think I might be right. Next You're not. Next question. I recently learned some devastating news about my best friend's wife through a mutual friend of all the people involved here. Let me preface this by saying that my buddy and I have been best friends for almost 18 years, and I've known his wife for about 15 years as they were high school sweethearts. I've always considered her to be a good person, good friend, and someone who is enjoyable to be around. From what I am told, my best friend's wife had a huge falling out with her friend about six weeks ago. Supposedly, her friend caught wife selling nude photographs wrong or off. And I can't say that I felt that way. In fact, they seemed really happy together. This leads me to believe that my best friend doesn't know what is going on and or that there is more to the story because I feel like he would be devastated if this was true. Then again, I have no reason to doubt my source who heard it directly from the friend. So what the hell do I do? First and foremost, my heart goes out to the friend in this situation who I know is a very kind person, but I'm not really that close with her. Is it my place to tell my best friend what I've heard? I feel like if I was in his shoes, I would want to know this story going around about my wife. But the last thing I want to do is ruin a marriage or a friendship. Or should I not get involved and see how this thing plays out on its own? Do I have any other options? Oh my God. It was way too long. A what? So all I got from this is some woman. Let me summarize. Some woman is sending nudes to her friend's husband and charging him. Let me summarize. This guy who's writing in, his best friend's wife was caught selling her nudes to one of her friend's husbands. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so her... His best friend's wife is no longer friends with that girlfriend because she was supposed to be in her wedding, whatever. Mm. They blocked each other. And all this information, his best friend found out, but like he didn't hear it from his friend. And so he's like, are they fine? Like, is this normal? Should I bring this up? Like, he didn't hear it from his friend. So he's he's asking, should he bring it up to his friend? So his his friend doesn't know? It'd be like, John, you hearing a huge ass rumor about Goo and his, his wife... And you don't know about it, but you hear about it from someone else. But Goo hasn't said anything to you. So you're like, does Goo even oh, fucking yeah. know? Oh, yeah. Definitely. I would have called oh, him. God. The meat, the, I should I get paid out. extra for having to break these this fucking, fucking down. This question was like four paragraphs <laughs> long. I didn't write it. I, I didn't write break it. Break it down. Oh, my God. So everyone writing in, make it more. I think that this. And if I tell him, but should I tell him? And I was just so I confused. think for all the parties involved here, it was pretty well written out it's hard to there's a lot of people involved but yeah i would if it's your best friend like i don't keep anything I'll i know just, i was gonna say honestly be the best policy because be like, <laughs> wouldn't you want to hear from your best friend than somebody else too like i'd be like i'm telling you this right like, i heard like because for also, anyone like, else you you didn't do anything wrong he's gonna like, be less embarrassed hearing it from his best friend than like a random person or somebody that he's not that too, close to like if these are get ahead of it that are flying around exactly get ahead of it like because if i was the wife and it wasn't true and these things were flying around and someone was saying this i'd be like th- thank you for saying something because i didn't know that this is the shit that people are talking don't worry John, also I'm people not are way better my people are way better at like 
keeping things in. The, honestly, don't tell Alex and I shit. <laughs> we're, as soon as because you, we're Italian. It's going like this. <laughs> yeah. Everyone must know. Well, no, I just think that there's certain things that I could be a steel trap for, but most things, if I know that like someone needs to know, like I'm not just going to like tiptoe around. Like if there's drama to be talked about that has you involved, we got, we got to talk about it. If you're guilt telling me stuff like that, you're pouring on me. Like I'm not keeping that, the demons oh, no, inside no, me. No, I'm pouring no. that out to make myself feel better. And also like <laughs> you're going directly to the source. Like you're not going and sharing this information with other right. people. And that's the difference. Like you go to the source. You're like, dude, you're the good person here. You weren't part of it exactly i think it'd be different if you were like oh my gosh i need to talk to other people about this no go to your best friend say this is the shit that i heard well, what are best friends for right you're supposed right. to tell them everything yeah, exactly because again what happens in the situation that your best friend finds out that you had this information and didn't bring it up to him like i just think that you gotta lay it all out me trust you less I'd be like why didn't you fucking tell yeah me? exactly like you knew this and you thought that this was true or you knew this and and maybe this is something that happened and there's more to the story that you don't know to your point so i just think that like bring it up because again maybe this isn't something that they necessarily want to share it could be a secret i just think honesty is the best policy just bring it up and just she should like, at least be sharing that money with him i wouldn't bring it up to the wife though bring it up to your best friend and that could be it too maybe they have an agreement in their marriage that she is an only plot fans, twist you know so it could just be like hey man your wife is doing, and he's like yeah Yeah, maybe don't go into it like in a panic be exactly like, just you be guys like, doing something on the side this info and i just you know this what's is what the, people are saying. What's the website? Yeah, and just be like, I'm happy to support the business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm happy to support. Is there like a GoFundMe? How exactly. does this work? Do, where do I subscribe? <laughs> what's her OF? I mean, you just... Nothing making light of someone's horrible situation. I don't know, I, you though. Know, it's very easy to assume situations. True. And you know what we you say. You could ma be making something bigger good. than it is. Exactly. It's not good to assume. Wow. Wow. That was great. Good job. Go team. Honestly... That was great advice. So you should take it and give us an update. <laughs> yeah. Also, if anyone has updates, again, don't reply. I guess you would have to reply in the anonymous section. I was going to say, just send an email with like the date. Do you like asterisks, like update, update, asterisk, asterisk? Yeah. Like make it very clear that it's an update because we got lots of submissions and Goo has to sift through the Goo sifts through. So maybe if you write like attention, Goo has a small penis, you'll like, yeah. you'll, like open that one up. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, before we move on, uh, I forgot. Oh. Uh, guys, like, subscribe. We're not done email. with the podcast I know, but yet. I want to. We gotta <laughs> say it. We gotta say it. I keep forgetting to say you it. You should have said it in the beginning. Well, I'm saying it now. Give us all those reviews. I want to see them. Five stars. Also, I saw somebody was like, "Where do I watch the podcast?" And I watched you guys lay into them in the comments. <gasps> love to see it. I love to see it. <laughs> John. Okay. Well, was we that the last to... question? Yeah, last one. Oh, okay. Should we move into our icks? Yes. What's your ick for the week? <laughs> well, my ick is you're gonna probably say your ick is me in the situation, but you didn't know either. My ick is the car wash. Oh place my god! Didn't have any uh, patience with me. This new vehicle we have is electric and uh, I don't really know how to fucking use it. And I was trying to wash the car and I went through like the automatic wash. First off, I'm pulling in and the guy's like, get closer, get closer, get closer. I'm like, I don't know how much farther to go. And then he's like, put it in neutral. And I could not figure out how to put the car in neutral. And now I got the car behind me honking. Alex is uncomfortably yelling at me next to me. No, I wasn't. And the guy's was tapping like, on the window. I'm, I'm like, okay, number one, I was not yelling at you. I was trying to help. I'm also hitting all the we're buttons. We're hitting all the buttons, yeah. not knowing how to do it. <laughs> and then the guy, I had to roll down the window and he had to show me how to put it in neutral. And I was like, oh my God. Probably because he's dealt with other people who also don't know how to put it in neutral. They don't make it fucking easy okay. though. Like the, the car design. I'm like, make it easier. I had in, to look up the in manual. In your defense, even... No matter what you're doing, you could be driving a bicycle through that thing. Going through the automatic car washes and trying to line your tire up is fucking stressful. Oh, I slotted that and right having in. them like just you're like neutral now, neutral later. Right. Keep driving. Like it's I think that's just a shared experience that that is one of the most stressful things in the world. Here's what is annoying with people <laughs> in their jobs who are experts at their jobs like you're the expert, not me. I love and how they, you're like thinking that an expert is putting your car in neutral. No, no, I'm just saying like people are like, oh, you're so dumb. You don't want to do it. Like, 
fuck you. I know you but you do it for 10 hours a day. Like right, right. that's like how you got mad at me in the beginning with like <laughs> shooting weddings or learning how to edit, stuff like that. Like I I never, never got mad at you. I just had low patience. Low patience, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But it's like you know nothing about healthcare or being an occupational right. therapist or whatever. Right. But like we're all like thinking it's so easy because we've mastered a skill. Right. That we're just annoyed with everyone else. So for not being able to new, know how right. to put your car in neutral. Oh totally. It's yeah. like your dad <laughs> with houses. Like it's so fucking easy. You could draw a whole house. He's, yeah. On and a he's pencil. like, how do you how do you how not do you, know that this wall was in weight bearing? And I'm like, I don't even, fucking know. I know. I don't know. He's like, Are you are you stupid? <laughs> they did call me stupid. He's like, measure something. I don't even know how to use the fucking measuring tape. What did I call a drill? I called it an electric screwdriver. <laughs> And my dad and my dad was an electrician. And he looked at me. He's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> Listen, we all have our things that we're good at and our things that are we're not good at. But the the uh, car wash was a little bit stressful because I was just like, "This is so cringe, like and embarrassing for both of us." Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, "How do we both know how to I not was like, know how, how to put what's in What's an acceptable tip now to to get them? Because <laughs> the cause limit does was, not exist. This is horrible. <laughs> We're holding oh up the God. line, and of course, like it was probably maybe only twenty seconds of holding up the line, but it felt like felt like an eternity. Eight minutes. Go your ick. My ick. Okay, well you took that one. Okay, so I have two, but they're kind of like miniature ones. One is. The writer's strike is over, which is fabulous. And I yes. think that we're on the horizon of the SAG strike ending, which is great. But my ick is during this time, it was a very, very clear that content creators were supposed to set strike in solidarity. And there were multiple content creators you who did not. You know who the not. fuck you are. They have actor in their fucking bio and they worked with major studios. And I'm like, how are you just out here scabbing, taking money from these studios, How are you going to say you're an films? actor and then do some shit like that? And then like yeah, that. and I'm like, meanwhile, we're just turning down deal after deal, which we get, woe is me, but it like does impact our business. Well, when it's thrown in your face where it's like, they're doing the deal that we were offered and that now we we're watching declined. them, that we declined and we're watching them do it. I'm like, And I'm like, I thought we were all declining this. Yeah. It just, it makes you... It makes you understand like a tr what a true scab is. So we're gonna we're gonna be toxic here and be like any SAG person, find them and make sure you don't give them a scarlet letter. Right, exactly. Make sure that they are blacklisted. That's so annoying. It, it just bullshit. is annoying when like you're trying to do something for the good of the group, and then there's one motherfucker who's like, "Well, I don't give a shit," and then they don't get pe penalized. Well, we don't know. We don't know. So that's one. My other one is um. That you're recently starting to just let fart slip out like an old man and pretending like it didn't happen. You just continue conversation. I'm like, John, we all, we were all there and heard that. And you're just. Do you really want to go there, Alex? John, yeah, I fart. Alex, but, we were shooting but I a TikTok it. yesterday. I'm like, what the fuck? Alex sits there and if whoever's watching the podcast right now, watch my face in the camera because this is Alex from across the room. As I'm sniffing, I'm like, what's that? She's like this. You, oh, you did not say what's that. I saw you give a look and she I go. She waits. No, and until, I go, you're right. She yeah, waits until I, I say something. Then she goes, oh, I farted. Yeah. But you're waiting for me to smell it first before you say something. But like I, mine are like silent you're, <laughs> yours are loud as fuck there's a difference the silent loud ones badality. don't smell the but silent like, ones you just you just you're releasing like, the devil but why would i admit to it before it hits the nostril like there's who a else rule. are you gonna blame kobe no because it's like what like why would i preemptively do it if like you smell so you don't it shock me then of course i'm just gonna say like oh yeah i did it like i'm not gonna deny it like i always own up to every single fart However, when it's so loud, you just try to talk over it. I'm like, John, you can't just like blow past that. How dare you? You're just. You can't blow past you're that. You're a liar. How am I a liar? I'm honest. Right, right. Okay, we're going to read a review now. <laughs> also, the people who left uh, one stars but left us a nice review, I think you have to add stars to it so, we, so they know it's a good one. <laughs> Somebody was like, I'm so into it. One star. <laughs> and they left like such a nice review. I'm like. Okay. It's okay. We forgive that mistake. <laughs> but now you have to go and leave us five five-star reviews. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, my God. This one's long. Fantastic podcast. Five stars by Snapple Apper. Ooh. I'm currently obsessed with this podcast. As a person who has recently been through some really crappy relationships, I started to feel very lost in the dating world relationships. 
This podcast has really brought to light that other people have issues in their relationships and I'm not alone in my problems. Also, how flubbed up some people are and I shouldn't take that to heart. That's just what some people be doing. Not only is it super enlightening, John and Alex are hilarious together and make a perfect duo for a podcast like this. They really managed to bring out the funnier side of some of these super messed up situations. 12 out of 10 would recommend this podcast for anyone who's looking for a good laugh and some more insight on how complicated relationships can really be. Love it. Love it. Thank you. We all have our problems. You're not alone. (laughs) You're not alone. We have our problems. Not right now. We did good. I think today we were like on fire. Bam. I think because we didn't like wear ourselves out this weekend that we were able to come to the table with more passion, more more energy, energy, more more power, more more footwork. (laughs) And on that note, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week. If you want to send us an email, you can find the link in our show notes or go to our website give it to me straight podcast.com and you can email us at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com and you can find us everywhere on the socials at give it to me straight podcast we will see you next week ciao ciao bye, bye.